Hey, Hack Forms Disease here. Uh, I'm going to shoot off another video tonight, and this is going to be about server form factors, uh, specifically what they are and uh, what they mean to the IT professional. So again, this is more or less aimed at those of you looking to become an IT professional in the near future. Uh, if you're not looking to become an IT professional but you're still interested in servers, maybe you'll find something interesting here, but just as a forewarning, not really aimed at you. Uh, still very simple stuff though, so uh, you're not going to get lost, I guarantee it. So form factor matters. Uh, you don't just go and blindly choose um, a form factor just based on what someone tells you. Uh, cookie cutter really doesn't work in IT in anything, and it certainly doesn't for anything in the data center. Uh, it really creates a disaster if you actually listen to somebody just rattle something off because it's what they think they know without them actually asking questions and understanding your environment. So please, if you ever in the future work with a reseller or any sales rep, whether they are at a reseller or at a uh, manufacturer such as HP or Dell, don't listen to them if they suddenly just push a cookie cutter build on you. If you're building a brand new data center and within five minutes they have a quote sent off to you, they just sent you a cookie cutter build. It's terrible. Um, it's going to create a disaster and you're going to absolutely regret listening to them. So find a new sales rep, find the reseller that will actually take care of you and learn about your environment what you're looking to achieve. That way they can make an intelligent decision with you, not for you. Um, there are three predominant form factors and we're going to discuss all three in this video. That's going to be tower, rack mount, and blade. There are a few others out there but they're proprietary to different manufacturers and they serve very niche markets so we're not going to talk about them. As a forewarning, I am an HP guy. Uh, you're going to see pictures of HP servers in this presentation. So if you're a Dell guy, I'm sorry, you use shitty technology made by an even shittier company. Uh, but you've been warned. Uh, maybe you just want to stop watching this video now. I don't know. It's up to you, dude. So first off, we're going to talk about tower servers. These are the cheapest initial investment. Um, they're designed for entry-level startups. Uh, for a company, say, of 10 to 20 employees that might want an exchange server on site. That's what these things are designed for, so that's where they're priced at. Um, and then nothing, there's not nothing in the way of necessarily special technology that went into these and in, into a tower server, so the, the, the cost to push them up doesn't really exist. However, these things do have amazing expandability. Out of the three different form factors, these things can grow more so than anything else. And it's because they're absolutely huge. Um, if you look at your desktop and you think that that might be a little bit of a pain in the butt to lug around, double to triple it, and that's what you're looking at for one of these, uh, one of these tower servers. If you can't double it in size, these things are definitely triple the weight of your existing desktop. I can tell you that much. They're huge. Um, for this reason, because of the size, you just don't see them in well-established data centers. Like I said, they're very good for, for that new company that might need uh, one, maybe two servers to fulfill very specific reasons, but if you have a data center and you already have infrastructure in place, you're not going to be buying tower servers, just unless it's a very very niche purpose. Um, in which case, I don't really know off the top of my head why you'd ever buy a, a tower server um, if you already have infrastructure in place anyways for a niche purpose, but I don't I, I digress. So the next two that we're going to talk about require racks. So I just want to do a quick little segue on racks. This is really boring stuff. IT professionals don't really care about about the racks their servers sit on. Um, it's just an evil necessity. Um, you can't get away from them. They are what they are. You need them, and they're going to be a part of your life. Unfortunately, these things do come in various sizes. Though you have your full and your your half racks. Your full size rack is going to be predominantly 42U. A little bit of discrepancy depending on the manufacturer and uh, what they what they consider full, but 42U is the industry standard. And just as a heads up, a U, a 1U, uh, is 1.75 inches in height by 19 inches left to right, so that's in width. Uh, this is an industry standard. This is it doesn't matter whether it's HP, Dell, Lenovo. 1U is 1U. Like I said, it's an industry standard. Um, if you didn't, if you thought so, here's the thing: racks are not just for servers. They pretty much anything that goes into your data center is going to fit up on up in a rack, um, whether it be uh, your your firewall, your security appliances, your switches definitely absolutely will, UPSs, etc. They all sit on a rack. Um, this is something most people overlook because it, we we tend to forget you know install and forget. Uh, once your rack is set up with all the servers, you usually don't ever interact with it ever again. But the nice thing is they're getting smarter uh, smarter every single day. HP uh, has now what they call the Intelligent Rack Series, and we're actually trans transitioning into them now. Um, and so 
just a quick overview of what that is is uh, along the front of the rack you know where the where the server actually meets the rack there are these thermal sensors and then the HP Gen 8 servers both uh, in their, their rack and their blades have these thermal sensors and these thermal sensors will actually talk with the rack and say hey I'm here and go ahead and label me so then the IT administrator on his computer will have uh, an application that actually paints a picture of the rack and everything that's reporting inside of it and allow the IT administrator to kind of denote what's on that uh, particular server or what 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 um, blades are inside that blade center etc cetera, etc cetera. and then if an exchange server dies it's no longer referencing a handwritten notebook or excel spreadsheet of saying where's this actual server exist in my data center I have five racks which one is it you just look to your tool do a little search and you know where it is also power distribution really cool um, if you have a server that's drawing a lot more power than others the intelligent rack series can talk to your UPS and, and push more power um, to the actual server that is eating it up and to kind of draw a little bit less from one server that might not be using much so pretty cool uh, really good with green initiatives kind of taking power where it's not being used and putting it where it needs to and uh, kind of throttling down on where it doesn't need to be at all so back into servers the most common form out there are rack mount servers uh, these come in varying sizes typically you're going to see one and two U's uh, you will see upwards of four to six U uh, t uh, rack mount servers but they're very rare um, or I shouldn't say rare but they're definitely uncommon anyways one and two U are definitely your bread and butter um, you need much less space with a rack mount server than you do with a tower if you got to figure if you have a 1U or a 2U, 1U is only 1.75 inches and these things are only 19 inches by width so that's not much space. Yeah they have some pretty good depth, uh, probably around 2 feet on average but you know that, that, that depth is already being utilized by the rack so you don't really care anymore. Um, you can slam a rack full of servers and you got a pretty good amount of uh, computing power versus what could you get out of towers, you know, not much. So uh, great expandability in these things, or not necessarily great, but pretty good. They're not, not great if you compare them to a tower, but uh, definitely they usually have some uh, PCI slots to grow with, DIMM slots from additional RAM, um, and uh, usually also have the capability for, or they have, always will have the capability anyways for redundant power supplies and whatnot. Um, and they're ready out of the box, and what I mean by that is these things have everything within the within each server to run standalone so it's got a power supply it has its motherboard its ram its cpu uh... the pci card so you can have your nick and whatnot and it's all inside the box and when i say kind of i mean because oftentimes when you buy a server it doesn't necessarily all come pieced together uh... The basic components will but if you bought extra ram to expand it and a secondary and a second processor you're probably slapping those in yourself just as a heads up uh... HP, unless you unless you tell them to do so they won't actually configure it for you um, so these are more expensive than a tower significantly less so than a blade server however uh, and they're really good for virtualized environments so you know if you watch my virtualized environment video I mentioned that you know uh, in a virtualized environment because we use a SAN uh, storage area network we no longer have hard drives on the actual equipment uh, they're absolutely unnecessary nowadays so you can slam a rack full of 1U servers load these puppies up with 96 gigs of RAM and, and, two, uh, and dual Xeon processors and you have nice little workhorses and you can fit a lot of them into a single rack but sometimes rack mounts don't give you the greatest density that you absolutely need so we start looking at blade servers these things have the most uh, initial investment out of all three uh, it's not uh, it's very easy for these things to run 40 to 80 grand um, just getting set up so you know they aren't, they aren't cheap but you know, if you're looking at say a, a rack mount server that costs at entry level around five to six grand, now you're looking at a blade uh, chassis maybe with just a couple blades and not necessarily filling it out, and you're already looking at forty grand. You can see the difference. Um, but what you get is an amazing amount of density. So these things, off the top of my head, I can't recall how many U's they are. There are definitely more than two U's though. But what you are receiving, but if you figure you're slamming ten servers into into a space that you can only put one server um, left to right anyways, uh, prior, it makes a lot of sense. And these things actually aren't all that tall. Uh, reason being, uh, these things aren't very expandable. The blades themselves, which you can see kind of sticking out of the black box there don't have power supply units on them. They don't have PCI cards. Um, they are pretty much just a motherboard the RAM, uh, you saw your DIMM slots, and, and your processing, uh, processors. That's really all that they need, and that's all that's actually required because the chassis takes care of everything else. 
on the back plane of this chassis, there's probably going to be four PSUs. That's usually kind of the the, the norm, and then all the uh, all the all the PCI features that you would need. So your NICs uh, predominantly. If you need iSCSI uh, for uh, direct attached storage or whatever, that's going to be on the back plane. So great high uh, great greatest amount of density you can absolutely get, least amount of expandability, highest amount of initial cost. Where does it make sense to use a blade? Well, it makes sense to use a blade when you really need to pack a crap ton of servers in as small as tight space as possible. Um, so if you're a small data center but you have a huge amount of computing power needed, you're probably going to be running on, uh, on blades. Or if you have plenty of space, my company I work for, we have our own data center, um, but we also need a shit ton of computing power. We that's all we do. Um, between between uh, the crap ton of servers that are used to power power our services to all the storage appliances we have, we need space. We can't just afford to to give space up to rack mounts. So we actually run blades, um, and we love it. We made that transition a couple of years ago, and it's been great. Um, a few years back, these things would never uh, been a considered in a virtualized environment. They just weren't really supported in it. Nowadays, they're amazing for for virtualized environments. Um, just kind of like one use servers are kind of now the the quote unquote bread and butter of a one, of a uh, of a virtualized environment. The blades are kind of becoming that way too. So it's pretty cool. Uh, and that's really all she wrote. Form factors. Keep in mind they always align to the business need. Everything we do in IT does so as well as does the uh, the form factor. Also takes into account your existing infrastructure. You're probably not going to go from uh, tower into into an into a blade right out of the gate. Uh, if you did, you skipped you probably skipped a few steps. I don't know why you're going from a three thousand dollar investment to to a forty grand, but whatever. Um, rack mount silver and supreme always probably will. Uh, just medium me, middle of the road uh, cost, relatively cheap total cost of ownership. Easy to heat, uh, rather easy to cool. That's actually one thing I did want to mention when it comes to blades. The things that the where they really do suck is cooling. You got to figure you're putting in this example ten servers in, in a really tight and enclosed uh, area. Um, you really need a very focused cooling system. Uh, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg if you don't already have it. And if you do have the cooling system that's appropriate, it has to be uh, probably reconfigured to, to take into account the blades. So just heads up. Um, Blades, however, are becoming less of a frightening concept. A few years ago, nobody would have really considered blades, except the the greatest and the mightiest out there, um, solely because of the cost. It was terrifying. Uh, no CFO out there was saying, "Yeah, let's go and spend 80 grand on 10 servers," when 80 grand could get you a whole lot more if you went another direction. Um, and that actually, 80 grand didn't get you 10 servers. It probably just got you three or four in a chassis. So it sucked. But it's becoming less expensive, and space is becoming more constrained as companies really aren't expanding real estate wise like they used to before the economy crashed. So it makes sense nowadays. Um, at the end of it all, servers suck. You know, no IT professional goes into it because they love working with servers. We all hate it. Uh, servers serve the purpose of giving us applications, on, on serving us an application, and that's where we're going to spend, you know, hopefully the bulk of our time. So that's what we usually like. Um, servers cost money. They need to be cooled, which costs money. They draw power, which costs money. Uh, and eventually they fail, uh, whether hopefully not within its life cycle for your company, but eventually they do. And so you have a care pack or whatever, or extended warranty, which costs money. Um, it just kind of sucks, but you know what? You need them, so they're here. Don't be afraid of them. Learn what you can, guys. Uh, that's all I've got for this video. Let me know if there's anything you want me to go into more in depth. I'll be happy to do so in a future video. Take care. Bye.